Hello world! The default Ableton Live set is a simple template, ideal for users who have never used Ableton before. But as you develop as a producer, it's a good idea to break the mold and customize the default template to suit your workflow. Simply arrange the set as you'd like it and click File, Save Live Set as Default. In this short video, I'll run you through my default template, which you can use to draw inspiration from for setting up your own template, followed by a few do's and don'ts guidelines to help you along the way. Let's get started. For my default template, the first big preference is to have it open in arrangement view rather than session view. In my first few years as a producer, I found myself really struggling to write anything more than 8 bar loops. Breaking out of session view and sticking to arrangement view where I can plan out and piece together across the timeline really helped me to get over that hurdle and to start writing more complete songs. Moving on, one thing I've stripped out from the default set in my template are sends and returns. I rarely use these in my own workflow and when I do, the effects I place on them are different every time. By removing these, it just helps to declutter the set, not only with fewer tracks, but also faders, and removes the risk of me forgetting about unused return tracks with effects idly taking up CPU in the background. So what tracks do I have in my default template? Well, starting from the top, I have a MIDI track with a drum rack, which I primarily use for kick drums. This allows me to quickly change out my kick drum to better suit the track later down the line once the song is taking shape. I also just prefer programming in kick patterns on the MIDI roll rather than dragging samples around the timeline. To give a more organic feel to my drum parts, I love using percussion loops. So right below the MIDI drum track is an audio track. Sometimes I'll even drag full drum loops onto here just to get the vibe going to build something around. After that, I have just three tracks for instruments, something to cover all basses. One MIDI track, one audio track, and an external audio track, already set up to receive audio from my guitar. And since it's mostly guitar that I use this track for, I've placed a tuner device on it. Finally, the three instruments are placed in a group, already set up for sidechain volume ducking against the kick, which is a common part of my workflow. Having this ready to go by default saves bucket loads of time and allows me to keep writing music when inspiration strikes, rather than stopping the flow to mess around with setup. For a brief overview of Duck Buddy and why I use it, I've put together a video that goes through exactly that and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. So hopefully now you're feeling hyped to go create or update your own default template. So here are a few tips to keep in mind. Don't go overboard with the number of tracks. Too many tracks will clutter the window and you'll find yourself not being able to find the track whose purpose you're looking for. Any more than about 8 tracks is starting to get a little too much. Remember, you're only looking for enough to get you started. Do use colours and useful track names to keep the template simple and easy to use. Try to limit the use of third-party plugins in your default template, as these only increase the time it takes for Ableton to start up. When laying down initial chord progressions and melodies, a simple instrument like a piano is ideal and there's plenty to choose from in Ableton. But, if using third-party synths like Serum is a staple of your workflow, don't hold back. Remember, your default template is all about setting you up for your specific workflow. And finally, update and review your template over time. It's important to constantly change things up and not get stuck in the same habits and routines which ultimately result in becoming uninspired. If you're a serum junkie, maybe try Ableton's wavetable in your default setup for a few weeks. You might be surprised by what that does to your music. 
If you'd like to use this template as your own default, or just as a starting point for your own custom template, there's a link waiting down below. And finally, you may have noticed one final track in my template which I haven't yet described. That's a particularly useful track which I have in every single project. More on that in the next video. Click.